Hey everybody, welcome to the real United States. And I don't suppose that there is any composer or musician who is more well known in American history than the March King, John Philip Sousa. Now, while that name may make some of you younger folks cringe, he is considered one of the most prolific American composers of the March here in the United States and he contributed so much to the really patriotic music that we have here in the United States. I'm standing here in front of the birthplace of John Philip Sousa. This is 636 G Street, and this is the home that John Philip Sousa was born in on November 6th, 1854. Now, Sousa's father, Antonio, was in fact a member of the Marine Corps band, and was stationed at the Marine Corps barracks, which at that time in the 1850s was nearby. So, this home now, believe it or not, is actually owned by a private individual who is a member of the President's Own from the United States Marine Corps Band. Kind of a fitting sort of a thing, I think, that it is still in the proverbial family of the United States Marine Corps Band. So Sousa, when he was 13, was compelled by his father to join the Marine Corps band, join the Marine Corps and get into the band. And this was a, an endeavor by Father Sousa to keep his son from running away and joining the circus band. John was uh, born with absolute pitch, or what you might call perfect pitch. He learned at a very young age to play the violin. He soon began to learn to play all kinds of other instruments. Uh, the flute, the coronet, the trombone, the baritone horn, all these things, it, it just came to him naturally because of his ability to recognize and match pitches by ear. So before I leave this location, in this particular video we're going to film probably over a number of days, so bear with us. It won't seem like it to you. Um, but G Street runs through Washington, D.C., east-west here. And the interesting thing is, is, if you were to take G Street right straight to the other end, and I mean the very end of the street, you'll run into the Congressional National Cemetery. And in fact, right at the end of G Street, we'll show you here soon, are the gates that open to a roadway that goes into the cemetery. And right along that roadway is where Sousa is buried. So we're gonna take you there and show you Seuss's final resting place. Now, he didn't die here in Washington, D.C. He was born here, he, he grew up here, and he was laid to rest here. He actually died up in Pennsylvania while on tour. Interesting thing about Sousa is he did not like recorded music. He, he detested it, thought that the new technology was terrible. And what was going to happen to the world when people did not sing and did not sit on the porch as a family and sing as a group and there wasn't live music? It was just a horrible, horrible thing. Now today we can't imagine that where only music was only live, but in Seuss's day in, 18, in the 1850s, 1860s, 1870s, and so on, certainly recorded music a very new thing, and the new technology as he got older was just something he abhorred. Although now probably one of the most recorded composers in the world. So anyway, let's go on down to the Congressional Cemetery and we will show you Seuss's final resting place. So when Seussa passed away, he was laid to rest in the United States Congressional Cemetery here at the very end of G Street. And you see they have this beautiful large bench monument here with his name on it. Someone's actually left a baton here in the lyre. There's also a trumpet mouthpiece, a silver-plated trumpet mouthpiece. Somebody has some flowers there, silk flowers, but flowers laid here. So a lot of people to this day still honoring Sousa's memory. Now I'd said earlier that Sousa deplored recorded music. However, it doesn't mean that they never were recorded under his direction. So in 1890, 
the Columbia Phonograph Company, which I'm sure later became Columbia Records, sought to make a recording of the United States Marine Band and was finally granted permission. And they cast, at that time, these were cylinders uh, the recording was made on. They cast just 60 cylinders of that very first recording. But by 1897, less than a decade later, later more than 400 titles were available and, re and recordings, making the United States Marine Corps Band essentially the first true recording stars here in the United States. Massive library, massive number of recordings, very popular in the 1890s and well into the 20th century. So while Sousa may not have liked the technology, he did eventually accept it. Now, today is the end of October. Well, it's before two days before Halloween. We're going to come back here because on Sousa's birthday, which will be Sunday the 6th this year, the United States Marine Corps Band, the President's Own, marches right down this very street, <clears throat> comes in, assembles around the gravesite here, and plays, amongst other things, the Stars and Stripes Forever, probably one of Seuss's most best-known pieces. So, as you're watching this, keep watching because that'll be at the end of this video. Now, they've gone to a great deal of care here also about the gravesite. Full cover here in granite on top of his gravesite. Even a small bit of music inscribed in the stone. Now, Bev's going to spin around and show you behind. There are additional grave sites in this whole plot, which is really quite an impressive bunch of stone. And here laid to rest near Seuss's feet are his wife, Jane, and his son, John Philip Jr. And more members of the Sousa family here, Helen Sousa, Jane Priscilla Sousa, also buried here in the family plot in the Congressional Cemetery. It's a very, very nice setting, and it's probably one of the largest family plots, probably, if not the largest, monument here in the park, in the park, in the cemetery. It seems like a park because it's very peaceful. I, I think that speaks volumes about how we feel about Sousa as a nation. Certainly, everybody recognizes Sousa's two, four time, 120 beat a minute music. It's something that, that, that really, I think, touches most Americans. And, and I'm sure that everyone is familiar with, at least to some degree around the world. So stick with us. We're gonna be back for the United States Marine Corps Band, the President's Own, right here in the Congressional Cemetery.